Welcome back to Everyway Woman. I have our color specialist and high-end fashion specialist, Janice Marshall, with us. And we're just going to talk about Janice Marshall. <laughs> so Janice, tell us why you got into the fashion industry in the first place. Well, I'm a military brat, so I've lived all over the world. And I was able to get a lot of influence from other places. And I think that's important to <laughs> combine, to become a stylist, and to get into fashion. And when I moved back to the States, I saw that Europe was so far ahead, and I really wanted to bring the, the forward thinking into an American way of dressing. Mm -hmm. Now, did you go into fashion as wanting to be a model? Did you go in wanting to be a designer? What was it that brought you in? I uh, went into the fashion industry because I did want to be a model, but unfortunately, I'm only five foot four and not five foot eight, so that ended that career. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to become the next Donna Karen, so I went to Virginia Tech and became a fashion designer and just went to Los Angeles instead of New York. Mm -hmm. So um, being someone who's really enthusiastic about fashion, yeah. do you, what do you see about fashion that can really help or hinder women or, and their image when it comes to fashion? If you're wearing the wrong color or the wrong fit, I really think that kind of hinders your confidence. But when you have the right fit and the right color, you can walk out there in the world and just feel confident in anything that you do. Mm -hmm. Was there anything while you were in fashion that kind of um, that was a big lesson for you or something that really touched you or? I think it was because growing up, you know, I wasn't a confident little girl. I just kind of let people beat, beat on me and I just believed everything that people said. But when I found out that clothes could make me feel confident and make me portray a certain way to people, that was the biggest lesson. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about fashion and um, the impact that it has on young developing girls? Well, I hate to say this because I think some of the fashions that we have now for young girls are a little too pro pro provocative. Mm -hmm. And I wish um, that they could learn how to dress more for themselves and cover things up that should be covered up and get, not give the message that is giving across to what they wear. What message is that? I think girls should remain girls for as long as they can. And what I mean by that is you don't need a boy. You don't need this person or that person. And it just remain the girl so that you can have your own confidence and go out there. Mm -hmm. um, fashion does impact young girls sometimes in a very positive way. And I know you're trying yeah. to move it into a very positive way. But sometimes it can impact girls in a very negative way. And one of the things that we see coming out through fashion is this unrealistic idea of being thin. Yes. How did that impact you? Um, growing up, I was. Not chunky, I wouldn't say, but I had compared myself to other girls that were very thin. And then that created in me an eating disorder, which I struggled with for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I would really hope that the young girls nowadays would not want to be that thin. It's unhealthy, and the physical things that you go through is just horrendous. What were some of the physical things that you went through? Uh, my teeth are rotten. I hate to say that. Well, not rotten. I've taken good mm -hmm. care of them, but I've had to spend thousands of dollars. Um, just now my, my knees hurt. There are th certain things that hurt. Your hair falls out. It took years to grow it back. Mm -hmm. What was it? Was there a moment when you realized that I have a problem? Or did it have to hit you? Did someone have to hit you over the head with it? I knew I had a problem, but I didn't want to admit to it. Um, I went to rehab when I was very, well, not young, when I was early 20s. Signed myself out because I didn't believe that I had a problem. And then when I turned 30 and still was dealing with it, I knew that I had a huge problem and mm -hmm. had to take care of it. I remember you had mentioned once that there was a moment. And it was when you were, you were on a table. Yes. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about that moment? I was on a table with another Ed, we call, we call eating disorders, Ed friend. And um, she just grabbed my hand and she said, whatever you do, don't be doing this when you're 30. And I just thought, oh, I couldn't do that. It's eight years from now. I'll be over it. But this thing just really, it destroys you. It destroys your heart. It destroys your life. And that was the moment when I turned 30 that I remembered back to that I had to change. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, I know eating disorders really do kind of carry, uh, cover a huge umbrella mm -hmm. of um, different types of eating disorders. Some of them are binge eating. You go to the refrigerator at night and just eat compulsively. Um, sometimes it's about not eating enough. Um, do you mind talking a little bit about the type of eating disorder that you befriended? Yeah. Yes. Um, it started out as just over-exercising, and I would exercise basically five hours a day. And then somebody told me in college, I hate to say this, that there's an easier way. And 
that's how I learned about bulimia, which is throwing up. It's overeating and then getting rid of it. Mm -hmm. And then finally that became too difficult, so I just stopped eating. Basically, mm -hmm. my diet was coffee and cigarettes for years. So what was your focus on, um, sometimes I say bulimia is associated with being able to fill yourself emotionally, mm -hmm. and um, you'll do that with food. Um, and then so anorexia can be attached to just about being thin. Yes, there is a misperception with that. Um, anorexia starts at wanting to be thinner, but there's, a, there's kind of like a point where some people go, oh, this is too hard, I'm gonna go back to living a normal lifestyle. And then there's that line where you just go over and it's just about being in control because your life is so out of control or you were raised in not a control, I mean, you weren't raised in a family or an experience that was good, so you just internalize and it's all about control. Because mm -hmm. you, you have a very picture perfect type of family, I right? Do. You'll see the pictures on the wall and you would never know. No that there's this huge river underneath all of that, no, no. behind that picture. Mm -mm. Um, do you have any uh, words of um, encouragement for, because right now on the web you, you'll see things like, um, on YouTube there are young girls who are posting um, uh, videos of themselves that are, they want to be thin, and um, they, they send these pictures out about if their hip bones, how far out their hip bones stick out, it says how great they look, so if they stick out a lot, they look great. Um, so, I mean, we would associate that with they have a, 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 a disorder. Yes. What would you say to someone who just posted a YouTube video of themselves with their hip bones sticking out an inch and a half past their, the flat of their belly, mm -hmm. putting up, look how sexy I am? What would you say to that person? What I would say to that person is it's all about who they are inside. And it's not about what they look like on the outside. And to, to continue working on what they are on the inside, because that's what's so important. And um, being thin is going to do nothing but destruct their lives. Okay. And it's not worth it. So I have one more question. Yeah, go ahead. At what age do you think you approached I, when I think back, I really think it started when I was in about third grade. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you another question. Okay. What would you say to Janice in third grade? What would you say to that girl? I would tell her not to worry and that everything was going to be okay and that you don't have to control anything and just enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for those beautiful words. And um, we will see more of Denise Marshall in the future, being our color specialist and fashion expertise. Thank you. Are you in every way?